He's like, you heal up. First person to drop out when you're healed, like your next fight could be in the UFC. You know, then he was about to leave. And I was like, wait, Dana, before you leave, can me, you, and Steve would do it, play blackjack? <laughs> and he was like, he looked at me, just kind of laughed. And he was like, save your money, kid. And then he was like, all right. What's up? This is Guardy with Clear Life Media, Clear Life Combat. We're here in Leak City at the Clear Life HQ. I have a guest here in the studio. I'm going to let him introduce himself. We're going to find out everything he has going on. Hey, what's up? What's going on? Uh, my name is Michael Aswell from Houston, Texas. I uh, just fought on the Contender Series probably like almost two weeks ago. Coming up about 13 days. Uh, yeah, I train at Four House Fight Club and, you know, currently live in Leak City. So this is kind of cool that we were able to make this work. Quick, uh, quick little drive over here. So, yeah. Yeah, I started messaging with you. You know, obviously I watched your fight. Uh, we had the chance to do a Zoom interview a couple of years, maybe like two and a half years or two years ago mm -hmm. now. And there's a lot that's happened in that. But you were like, dude, I'm like six minutes away. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know you live in Leak City. Yeah. But I mean, since the last time we talked, you know, two over two years ago, I mean, what's all happened? You've been pretty busy. Yeah, it's crazy because I, I seen that y'all um, reposted that on Instagram and I was like, man, that was... It was like so long ago, but it wasn't long ago, right? I mean, especially in this game, I just, I think at that time I was 3-0, and you know, when I'm 9-2 and now, 11-0, and but 9-2 and now, and uh, yeah, I just fought the biggest fight of my life 13 days ago in front of Dana White, so going from, you know, being 3-0 and with you and being on the local scene and just kind of working my way up to having that fight's been pretty uh, surreal, it's been pretty crazy, but, you know, if you watch that interview with you, it's like I kind of knew that I was going to be there. It was just a matter of when and where. And, you know, it was 13 days ago in Vegas, so it worked out. Yeah, you knew. And and um, I'll talk to a lot of different people and they say, hey, you know, putting it out there, you got to be able to see it. And back then, I guess you did know or you, you did know what the goal was. And I guess the work that it has taken, has it been what you thought it would be to get to this point? What kind of work has gone into this? Yeah, I mean... You know, it's just an everyday thing. It's, I think the hardest part is just just being consistent, you know, and just, you know, I knew what I wanted since I started when I was 17. And it was just a matter of just making sure life didn't get in the way. You know, that's what my coach would always tell me. He said, you know, you can do whatever you want. You can be whatever you want. You know, you just, the only thing you can't control is life. You know, you just don't know what, what's going to come with it. So I just tried to stay on the right path, try to, you know, stay on a straight line and just make sure that I was always working and, consistently trying to get better you know and not just in the mat just in life you know just constantly getting better you know one percent every day if I could you know and uh yeah has it been everything I thought uh I mean yeah a little bit more I mean honestly my um career has been gone smoother than most I would say you know and you know I'm young I'm 23 you know I'm in school like never really had to work or you know this is my work this is my passion so I've been blessed to live out my dream and not have to settle and do something that I didn't want to do or, you know, it's been, uh, it's been nice. It's been fun. I literally had the, like, I literally, I tell everyone this all the time, I had the best day of my life, like 13 days ago. Like that was without a doubt the best day of my life up to this point, you know, not to say there's not going to be bigger ones, better ones, especially probably when I have my first UFC fight, that'll be, you know, probably the next best day of my life, you know, but, um, I'm just so happy and I know I'm just so blessed. Like this is like, you don't understand. I literally have so much fun every day. Like wake up and I'm like, oh, I, I, I get to train for my job. Like that's, it's such a blessing. Like it's so just, you know, I'm so happy. <laughs> What's it been like, I guess with you in the, in the seat, like you being there, um, I know in the past, you know, with some teammates, some other things, you'd be there, but like, I mean, you're the focus, the cameras are on you. We yeah. even talked a little bit about the behind the scenes yeah. stuff, some of the footage that's not even out yet. Yeah. I mean, what's that like with all the lights, the cameras, everything's on you? I mean, I, I've been ready for that. You know, I was born to be in front of the camera. I feel like, you know, it's it's nice to have like a lead up, right? Seeing other people do it before you. So you kind of get an idea of what it's like. And so when that time does come, you don't freeze up and you don't, let the moment be too big, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but I feel like for me, it's it's natural. I I do what I do. I'm going to be me regardless if there's a camera on me or a microphone or anything, you know? So I love it. I love the lights. I love the camera. I was upset when I lost because I wasn't going to be able to do interviews or nothing. You know, like even before my fight, they had the little TV up with the other fights. So, you know, we get to watch everyone, you know, before you 
and uh, I would pop up on the TV. I'm like, oh, yeah, I look good on TV. You know, even before I walked out, you know, they're like, hey, four minutes before you walk, you know, uh, I see me shadow boxing and stuff, you know, kind of watching the same feed they are, like me shadow boxing. I'm like, oh, yeah, I look good on TV, you know. Uh, so, I, I mean, I'd like it. I don't mind it. It's, um, and I know it comes with it, you know. I knew that this is what I want to do. Well, I need to be prepared to do what I need to do. So, I, not to say I practice, but I've, you know, worked a lot on being on camera, talking, being able to, you know, pronunciate, articulate, being able to be professional, you know, on the camera too. It's because it's part of the job at the end of the day. Yeah, it is. And it may be a, a part of the job that a younger fighter may they maybe don't think of right. like how important that is like hey i got to be able to connect with the the fans and and the people and then communicate in an interview and all that stuff but um i guess when did you realize that that was a part of, of what's required yeah i mean i feel like it's just always been a thing i mean you see connor i mean i guess really when connor started doing it a lot of just you would always see his press conferences get you know views and they just started miking and just know that mm-hmm. he started recording everything you know behind the scenes i don't I was telling you earlier, I felt like I should have had a camera on me since I was in high school, you know, because I feel like, you know, I feel like some people's lives are just so interesting that they should be documented and filmed. And I mean, I feel like anyone's life is pretty interesting to somebody, you know, everyone has their own different life and what they do and how they live and stuff. So, you know, filming it, I don't mind, you know, I think people are, are worried about, you know, their personal and, you know, they don't like having all their stuff out there, like. For me, it's, you know, it, it is what it is. Like, at, at the end of the day, when you're in the UFC, all your stuff's going to be out there anyways. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to we find you and find your stuff and dig up stuff on you. So, like, at the end of the day, like, it's all good. If you want to just film me and record me, I'll, I'll be all right. What's the feedback been from, I guess, like, new fans and, and friends and family? What's the feedback been on, on social media? Because that fight and, you know, in Dana White's words, like, what did he say about the fight? Well, I guess <laughs> I'll just walk, like, as soon as I got you know, as soon as they heard the decision, everything they like rushed me back to the room, to the back room, and the doctors checked it out. They're like, "Oh yeah, you gotta, yeah, you need to lay down." So they, so they laid me down on the low stretcher, and then they had two doctors kind of looking at my scar, like, "All right, how should we go about this? Like, what should we do?" And all that. So, um, yeah, I was just laying there, and they're getting ready to operate, and then, you know, we're just talking. I'm all angry and stuff, and uh, I just hear someone talking, and I'm just kind of. My eyes are closed, and I just hear someone talk. I like, Dana? I was like, is that, is that, is that Dana White? And I, I remember opening my eyes, like if I like literally just woke up, and he's just standing in front of me, he's just, like shaking my head. <laughs> yeah, I was like, standing right there. Bro, he's right in front of my face. <laughs> you look, you saw the Instagram, yes. it was like all up in my face, like looking at my, he was looking at my scar like, God damn, that's in the nasty I've ever seen. And he's shaking my head, he's like, kid, that was a hell of a fight. I was like, 3027, are you serious? <laughs> and he was like, he's like, yeah, I don't know what the hell that was. He's like, I thought you won 29, 28. And then um, he was like, look, I'm going to, you know, give you your win money. I'm going to give you your show money. And I'm going to give you a bonus. I was like, holy. <laughs> and uh, he was like, I already talked to Sean Shelby. He's like, you heal up. First person to drop out when you're healed. Like your next fights could be in the UFC, and like stay ready. Like you're number one on the, on like getting a call for the short notice. And I was like, oh my god, this is awesome. <laughs> and then uh, you know, then he was about to leave, and I was like, wait, Dana, before you leave, can me, you, and Steve would do it, play blackjack. <laughs> and he was like, he looked at me, just kind of laughed, and he's like, save your money, kid. And then he was about, I was like, all right, all right, fine. I was, I was hoping he would just like. Give me money to play with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. So yeah, uh, technically he kind of did. Yeah, <laughs> nah, he's been honest and yeah. I should have just put all that on black or something. <laughs> um, so that was you know when I heard all that, I was <laughs> I like started crying. And I was like, holy, sh-. like that's I mean that's everything I wanted to hear. Or that's everything I wanted. You know that's all I that's what I came there for. You know I came there to get paid. They got more than I would got paid. You know, I want to get a contract. Dana basically gave me a verbal, you know, contract. And then, you know, the feedback, changing my life, I guess, is what I want to do, too, is just kind of move my life in a better direction. You know, the feedback's been great. Everyone thought I won from what I've seen on Twitter, Instagram. Granted, I think a lot of people bet on me, so they probably think I won. Yeah. <laughs> Bias, but, um, yeah, I mean, I haven't really got, like, nothing crazy me. Like, everyone was just like, man, you're a warrior, you're a dog, bro, like, like that fight was crazy, you know. I thought I thought you won. 
I mean, for the consensus, like social media, from what I've seen, I clearly won the third round, which I did clearly won the third round. But, you know, everyone else on social media is like, they're saying the 30-27 is crazy. I was training on Twitter because the 30-27 was so crazy. And then the cut was so crazy. And then when Dana posted me, it was over. I was like, oh my God. I yeah. said, all my friends, Dana White posted me on Instagram. <laughs> I wish he tagged me. Then I would have been famous. Yeah. <laughs> he should have tagged you. <laughs> if he would have tagged me, I would have millions of followers. Next but, time, Dana. Yeah. yeah, free. yeah. <laughs> when I'm in the UFC, I guess, he was like, you know, not yet. Yeah. But I was like, dude, that, that means Tom Brady definitely saw my cut. Because Tom Brady follows Dana White. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? We think about it. Uh, uh, what, what about the money? I mean, are you are you spinning that? Are you saving it? Or what kind of person are you with? That, is that playing for? Or what? Yeah, I mean, I put one third of it in savings, and then the rest I you know, just paid off. You know, my manager, coaches, kind of paid off some people that you know took care of me and stuff like that. So then, the rest has been using it for live, live right now. You just live, mm-hmm. you know, and then just trying to save it and try to put money to fight again, try to get some more money. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe after Vegas, I'll be rich or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, when is when are you going back to Vegas? I'll go tomorrow. Are you taking any of them uh, <laughs> any of that money from savings with you? Uh, well, I would just use what I have and see what if I need to pull it out. I will. But yeah. So you're going tomorrow. What's going on? Yeah. So my boy Josh Van's fighting at the Spear. He took a short notice fight. Uh, so that's pretty wild. So I'm just gonna go be there with them, to hang out with them. You know, just help them. You know, this week. Have him have some people he knows with them and just talk to him, hang out, help him cut some weight, you know, and hopefully I can uh, find a ticket to the spear. If anyone's got me, just let me know. Yeah. Then, <laughs> hopefully I'd be like Steve would do it. I'll tell him uh, the Dana White story. And, yeah, he might. He probably saw it then. We talked about Tom. You talked about you know Tom Brady, like all those people who yeah. probably saw. I mean, he definitely saw it. Yeah, people saw it. I'll be like, dude. He's like, oh, that's you. <laughs> and then we'll be playing blackjack, and then I'll be on his live stream, and there was. <laughs> We'll see. I mean, I think it's gonna be fun. There's gonna be a, definitely a lot of people there. It's gonna be uh, Vegas. It's gonna be pumping. It's gonna be great. Yeah, that's gonna be a crazy event. Um, I've just see, I've seen footage of what it can do outside, inside for concerts, and I oh, mean yeah. for a, for the a UFC event, which is already a major production. Uh, uh, that's gonna be very memorable. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, I went for like some. I don't know. I think it was like Earth or something. It was pretty cool. You know, I was like, man, if a fight's in here, then it's you're gonna feel like you're like inside the ring. Yeah, I think that's what they're doing. I don't know. We'll see what how it ends up. But I mean, it's not like I can stay. Like if I get a ticket anyways, I'm only staying for Josh's fight. I'm leaving. It's not like I'm like gonna stay for the rest of the car. Uh huh. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I just care about Josh. I just care about Josh. I'll watch the rest with Josh on the TV or something. Unless they want to stay there, I guess we can stay. But if yeah. they let us, they probably won't even let you. You see, just. After, oh, they do with the fighters, huh? Yeah, they just kick you out. Like, you gotta, you gotta, go. Hey, get the bus. Yeah, get the bus. You got to go back home. Do a post-fight post yeah. fight interview. You win, post-fight interview. After you're done, get out of here. Send you off. Even like after after my fight, it took like an hour to get stitched up. I got like 30 stitches maybe or something. I don't even know. Something crazy. And I was just sitting for an hour. I get up. Everyone already left. All the, everyone, no one was there. And everyone's recording. I mean, a couple people, UFC people were recording me and. It was like, all right, just get in your truck and just took me back to Palace Station. I was like, all right. But, well, I saw you had your stitches out, and I saw you posted that on your story. Yeah. I, I mean, that seemed like they held up pretty quick. Yeah, so, I mean, those God, those doctors are unreal. I mean, they, like, real deal. Like, because the, this one I got, their Fury is all jacked up in the middle. But, like, this one, they, like, everyone thought it was, like, the ugliest, you know. It looks good. Ever. It looks yeah. good. It looks I great. Mean, yeah. They did pretty good. I'm, I'm happy, you know. So hopefully he's got to, the doctor just said, do not open it up. Do not reopen it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> one one requirement. Like, okay, all right. So no no contact for me. I'll just do my cardio and go from there. Yeah. You talked about uh, Tom Brady or mentioned him. Yeah. Did you watch any of the the Cowboys game or see his commentary? And then did you watch any football? And what did you think about it? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely a huge Texan fan. I've always have been since, you know, birth. You know, just Houston through and through, you know. Um I think we're probably going to win the Super Bowl. I've been saying that for like five years, but I'm actually serious this time. We actually have the squad. I saw a little bit of the Cowboys. Dave Portnoy picked them and put money I on I saw him. that. <laughs> My girlfriend loves Portnoy. I like Portnoy too. I think he's cool, dude. Uh, yeah, I know. He put it. I know. I did too. It's like $100,000. I didn't put that much down. <laughs> I, I have someone that's winning the Super Bowl too. So, yeah, I love football. I mean, that was my first love. That's what I started doing when I was a kid. You know, I thought I was going to play football growing up. That's, that was my first dream was to play football and I just didn't really grow or I didn't really, uh, you know, 
get to the requirements that I needed and uh you know, I started wrestling a little bit and then it kind of made the transition to fighting it. But I'm glad I picked something that worked out because the football fire was a good work. <laughs> but yeah. I do love football. My boy's actually on the practice squad for the commanders right now. So cool. Yeah. Um, so he's next up. He's kind of like, like we've been best friends since high school, you know, so like we kind of been having the same route. And now it's like I'm on short notice. He's pretty much on short notice. They give you a call and like you kind of got to be ready to go. So it's been a, been pretty dope seeing him. I mean, literally, I was cutting weight. This is crazy. So I'm cutting weight, you know, the night before um, weigh-ins for the contender series, and the commander's game is on against Patriots. And I'm just watching, you know, this last week of preseason, so it's big for, you know, especially rookies and stuff, you know, getting playing time, and I'm cutting weight. And my boys in the game, boom, they're on, like, the 11-yard line. I'm like, you got to give it to him. Like, he'll score, you know. And I'm literally in the little mini sauna. Boom, give it to him. Dive in the end zone, touchdown. And I'm going crazy. I'm like, it's just crazy to see like our, you know, past just being, you know, kind of moving together, you know, simultaneously. And we talked a lot this summer, you know, just staying ready, just, you know, working and just knowing that everything's going to, you know, work its way out when it does, you know. So it's been, uh, it's been pretty dope to go through that with him for sure. Did he go to U of H as well? No, he went to high school with me. So we went to straight. So we know each other since we we're 15. Okay. Yeah. So we've been, what's well, that? Uh, take almost nine years now yeah you know so we like i said we you know he's had his goal of doing what he you know play at the highest level and me fight at the highest level so because i started fighting when i was 17 so when i when i started fighting i was like this is what i'm gonna do this is i'm you know i'm all in like let's get it so yeah no it's been pretty special you know it's the people that that are around you that are going to elevate you to be better you know you hang around People that are doing bad things and bad stuff, you know, they're going to drag you down and bring you down, you know. So you want people that are like-minded people like you and very motivated, goal-oriented, you know, and helps push you and helps, you know, elevate your game to, you know, a higher level. Mm -hmm. How big, I guess, of a help has your family and even your girlfriend been through through all of this? I mean, they've been everything. Like, I, I've, I've told a lot of people, like, my mom, dad, and sister have been there since I was born. So that's 23, almost 24 years of my life that they've been there and it's only support. They've only been, you know, shown love. And that's why, you know, I, I'm so loyal to them. Like they, they've done everything for me, you know? So my girlfriend, since I met her, it's almost been, you know, two and a half years. Like as soon as I met her, it's been nothing but love from her and her taking care of me. And I kind of like explained like, hey, like, you know, probably not gonna have money all the time. Sometimes I will when I fight, you know, have money, this and that, you know? and. She's such a beast. I mean, she wakes up literally at 5, 5.30 every morning, and she works construction, so she doesn't get off till 5 every morning, you know, and, you know, she's uh, she's an engineer. She's super, like, she's super dope, like, but she's, you know, she can hold her own. Like, she really doesn't need me, like, my help. Like, I definitely help her out, and, you know, for me, it's a little different, right? So she's working all hours. I'm at home taking care of the, you know, our animals and taking care of the house, cleaning, laundry, and stuff like that. Um, you know, but she's helped me so much. You, you know, sometimes I don't have money to get us food. You know, she yeah go buy us food for the week. What do you need? Hey, you know. And now she's really into the sports, and now she watches a lot. <laughs> she knew nothing. She literally, when I met her, she didn't know anything. She watched the UFC like zero. She didn't even know like McGregor. Like that's how nothing she she knew. At what point did she realize how good you are and like the potential? Or you know, well, and that's the thing. Like, cause she never really you know watched fighting, so she her perspective on fighting is so different and it's kind of nice to see you know and she'll watch it like oh that person's probably gonna lose and then they'll lose i'm like they she can kind of see it from you know outside but um you know for her she says it's hard to like know how good i am because she's not even she can't even watch my fight she's like she's literally like she like closed eyes but she's you know she definitely sees the growth in between fights and how you know much better i've been getting in more mature you know even outside of you know the cage it kind of is you know one-on-one -on -one uh in itself you know but she um i guess really like she hasn't said much about how much better i get because you know she's like knows i'll get a big head or whatever because i you know i already i already think i'm awesome you know I'm like i watched my last i watched my last fight i was like oh my gosh like i look so good like i was like i didn't even know i looked that good yeah really i, I was like wow like a couple of things here and there i should have done more definitely put on more like i definitely should have finished them in the third but like Regardless, I was like, wow, my boxing looks good. Like, I was moving good, footwork looked good, you know. So, and my girlfriend told me that, then I get a big big head. That's why that's why Daniel didn't tell me nothing 
telling me I suck all the time. <laughs> you know, get a big old head and stuff. But yeah, I mean, like, I mean, family's everything to me, really. Like, I, uh, I did an interview not too long ago, and I was like, I only had four tickets, and it went to my mom, my dad, my sister, and my girlfriend. And I was like, truly, that's all I need. You know, that's all I. You know, if I only had them four, I would be okay with my life. Like everything would be good. You know, so like, I'm just very you know, loyal to my people that have been there for me, that want me to succeed, that want me to do better, you know, and I, you know, I always, I don't want to prove people wrong. I, I want to prove my people right. You know, people that say, yeah, like, you're going to do this. You, you can do this. You can do whatever you want in life. As long as you just work hard and put in the work. That's all my family had always told me. You literally can do anything you want. Just work hard, you know, and make sure you're making good grades and stuff so you can do what you want to do, but we're going to support you no matter what you want to do. You know, they're like, if you want to be an astronaut, you can have been an astronaut. If you, you know, we would have supported you doing that, you know. So I've been blessed to have people like that to, you know, fill me with those, you know, when I was a young age, mm-hmm. you know, then you, then you start believing it, you know, every day. I'm like, I literally could do whatever I want, you know, like you, you really believe it. I, I truly believed everything that I said that I was going to do. Like, I, I was like, I'm going to fight. I'm going to be one of the best in the world. And I truly believe that every day, you know, since I was 17. So now that we're here and that it's happening, you know, other people are starting to notice and it's nice. But my family that I've been telling since I was, you know, a kid, they, they've seen it and they and they believed just as much as I did, you know. So it's yeah. I love it. I mean, I wouldn't be here without them. Mm. Yeah. Let's talk, how, how's it like being uh, with Iridium? Iridium's good. I love Iridium. I love Jason. Like, you know, of course, when you're coming up and stuff, there's only so much they can do. Like, you're 3-0. and oh, Like, they're not going to get you in the UFC. But like Jason told me, he said, look, just keep doing, keep doing what you're doing. Keep fighting when you fight. And guess what? When you, when we get to the position where it's time to talk to the UFC, guess what? I'm going to get you in there and you do the rest. So I got put myself in position. Of course, Jason did his thing, got my contender series opportunity and like took care of the rest, you know, and we, we've had that relationship and me and Jason have always been open and we always talk. He answers as soon as I text him, I sometimes I don't answer as fast as he does, you know, and he's just always there. Like, if I need anything, he will be there. Like, I could call him, and I, I guarantee you an answer. Like, he's just, unless he's training or something, but, I mean, Jason's a man, dude, and Jacob takes care of me, Lance takes care of me, Simon. I mean, they're they're all, like, they feel close to home, you know, and um, they never did me wrong, you know. Every time I needed something, they took care of me. Every time, you know, they need something from me, I took care of them. It's just, um, it's a great relationship that we got, and uh, I'm blessed for them because, you know, Jason, Jason's, uh, Jason's the guy. If y'all know Jason, he is the guy. <laughs> He's the man. So he is, and you'll see him at, you know, at fights or I mean, even these, you know, up and coming, or you'll see him in the cage whenever you know there's a UFC champion there. They, yeah. He's in the, in the picture. It's really, it's just really cool to see that he does care, and that's what I've heard. And I always talk, and people say like, yeah, text me answers, all this stuff, and so you see like he's very busy, and he's built a team that seems like it can unreal. support and help. He's unreal. He's probably mm-hmm. the busiest man I know, and he's still. We'll take the time to like get back to you. Like he's he's a real. I mean, like you said, he was at he been going to Fury amateur fights because he has some amateur guys that he signs. Yeah, and this dude like and I would I'd be with him. I was learning with him in Denver. He's like, oh, I gotta go fly back to Houston. I gotta go. I will go do it, and I'm gonna come back. I'm like, God, this guy is crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this guy's not. So, okay, something else. This is a uh, unrelated to to Iridium and stuff, but uh, Davor Gallegos. So he is a student at U of H. He's from the Valley. Uh, he's at he's at Metro, and he um, is fighting for a promotion called Nuka N U C A. But it's a collegiate. It's brand new. It's only their second show. They had one in like West Virginia, and the second one's going to be at Red Owl uh, over in Houston. Nice. But it's a collegiate um, based uh, MMA thing. So he's representing U of H, oh, and nice. he's going against a guy that's from LSU. But there's like, he's like, there's USC, there's like University of Texas, yeah. but that's what it is. So you're representing your your school. And I was like, man, that's actually kind of a, a cool really? idea. Yeah. To have like MMA fighters that are representing, and this is a, right now it's amateur, okay. amateur, but I was like, man, that's still sick. You know, U of H versus yeah. LSU, but on a, on a MMA scene. So he's like, yeah, there's other U of H guys, but I don't know. What do you think about that? Okay. I think it's a cool idea. I mean, that's awesome. Like, Cause see that that was the issue. So when I was coming up, right, I was an amateur, right, at like nineteen, right, when I was in college. You know, like started off even before college. I already, I turned pro at twenty. You know, so I was still in college when I turned pro, and it's hard. You know, school is not easy. You know, especially like it's really like work. Like school is almost work. You know, especially right. when you're putting 
the hours you're taking five classes like that is not easy like i i've been having to take less classes because i've been training so much and that it's you know i'd be taking more classes and like doing bad in a couple or doing you know and it's like wasting my money and it's just yeah. not ideal you know so and i would talk to the teachers like for example i was flying back and forth from kansas city to houston or, i mean i was training in kansas city but my i would talk to my teachers like hey like this is what i'm doing you know they're like okay like, they're like they're, <laughs> like it's not associated with the school it'd be different like the football players they get to miss class miss this because you know they got you know stuff with the school right and um you know they get you know help with a bunch of stuff tutors and all that like people make their schedules and i'm over here making my own schedule i'm taking the long classes that i don't even know that i need or you know and and i talked to the teacher and like well so associated with the school like whatever you do on your own time is your own time and i'm like like you don't understand right like right. this is big this is really big like it's gonna be huge but whatever and you so they're like well just fly back for the test or whatever so i would be in kansas city i'd fly back take a test fly back go back and train like like this is what I was doing for school and stuff. Like this is how like, so it's nice that now there's something that's related Start. to school. So you could be yeah. like, hey, like this is what I'm doing for the school. Can I get a little help, a little leeway or whatever? And hopefully it, it ventures out and helps kids, you know, and give them an opportunity to go train or something or have fun and perform in a sport, get a group of people. Or, you know, just yeah. it's a good. That's good to know. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna maybe I'll run it. Yeah, maybe I'll run it. I'll get maybe I'll invest in it. Yeah, it has potential. Like. A big potential. I like yeah. that. Yeah, even like scholarship potential, like all That's the things cool. where if it, you know, it's just starting, maybe it gets big and then, you know, NCAA, I mean, like, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Like, you know the sport is growing. Like, it, oh, yeah. It's moving. Like, I'm getting in at the right time, honestly. I feel like, I feel like the UFC is really starting to blossom to, you know, what it is and moving on from, you know, just being about McGregor because, of course, it, it's his, that he sells and, of course, everyone wants to see it, but now it's like, oh, well, they're trying to get involved with everyone. They're trying to like everyone. Look at O'Malley, you know, it's, going at the spear, you know? So it's starting to move to, like, everyone's starting to know all the fighters and not just, you know, one or two or... Right. You know, it's really starting to move as an organization. Have you taken a... You know, Josh Van, man, he's, like, had some fights that have dropped out, but, like, yeah, I'll take a late notice this. Sure. You know, I guess how does the thought process for you change? Have you taken a late, uh, like, a late notice fight before? No, but I, I've never been against it. It's just never... For me, like, if you're I sell so much that they want to promote it, they want to... Have. You were always the the headliner, usually like at the yeah, if not co main or you mm -hmm. know, main, especially when I was even when I was coming up, right? Just because I sold so much, I probably I definitely sold over like quarter of a million all the times I fought for Fury. It's crazy, easily, definitely maybe, maybe half. Like they said, I was a, I sold more than Sage Norcutt, all them. I just my people, like we talked about, my family, my sponsors are like family to me, you know, and they've they've seen me come up, you know, playing football and stuff, and they, you know, they know that I was just worked hard and was really great and they just knew that whatever I would do, you know, it would happen. But um I don't even remember the question. Well just like taking that that late notice fight. Oh short notice, yeah. Before. I mean like before this contender series fight, I was trying to take a short notice because like Josh remember Josh was gonna find the contenders and he got caught up and fought uh Zagula, mm -hmm. you know. So I was telling Jason like, hey, I'll fight short notice dude. Like I'm good with short notice. Like let me know because I feel like my cardio would hold up short notice. I think I would be better short notice because, you know, it's no expectations, right? It's like, hey, this guy took it off four days, like, you know, and even the the 24th, August 24th, that was three days before my fight, there was a an Apex card in Vegas and the 45er fight pulled out and I was like, yo, Jason, like, what's up? Like, yeah. I'll be here anyways, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Like, let me know. And he's like, well, we found somebody already, but, um, He's like, you're crazy. You know, are they finding this? Is it at the Sphere? Is it Diego Lopez and Ortega? And Ortega, yeah. which he, you know, I saw him fight for Fury, and then he took a late notice fight. And if I remember correctly, I could be remembering wrong, but he, I don't think he won, but he put on like a crazy performance. And now look at his, I get the his top position. 10. It's a top ten guy. Yeah, that's what's crazy about short notice. Like you literally could fight like a top fifteen guy just because they need somebody real quick. Yeah, <laughs> and then if you impress, even if it like, exactly. look at Diego, he was able to get the fights. Like, he didn't need to fight that many people because he already fought a good guy, so they know he can hang already, right? Like, it's, yeah. that's the thing. Like, oh, he just fought a top 10 guy, we'll beat him. So he can definitely hang with these other guys. So they give him, like, three more fights, four more fights, or finish out his contract. And after his contract, he was like, yo, give me top 15, and then he's getting number one rate guy. So <laughs> crazy how that worked out. Just because, I guess, the 45 division is kind of weird right now. A lot of older guys are fighting. They're kind of moving all their way out. So the, the featherweights, that's why I'm kind of intrigued 
um, with the featherweight, just a bunch of young guys kind of pushing into the top 15. All these older guys are on their way out and stuff. So new generation definitely of uh, featherweights in the UFC are coming. So there wasn't really anyone for him to fight. You know, if you <laughs> look like, yeah, I mean, you couldn't really fight anyone else. And it makes sense, you know, especially what he did for them. They're like, yeah, of course, we'll put you in the spear. Or take his Mexican like work out. He's, <laughs> he's Diego like trained with all the Mexicans, you know. Yeah, he teammate with Alexa Grasso and them. So mm-hmm. like, you know, he's Brazilian, but still like he's basically Mexican. Like he's Spanish is like his second language almost, you know. So yeah, he's a cool guy. I almost fought him. I almost took him on short notice for Fury. Really? Yeah. There's uh, it was right before he got caught up. Uh, someone fell out. I guess this fight, and uh, you know, I was I've been texting Eric since I was like one and out, but I'm like, yo, give me the belt, <laughs> give me the title, <laughs> like, and so I was like, yo, what's up, like. Give me the title. Like, I was trying to fight Jesse Butler, all them dudes that had the belt at the time. Texting Eric, like, yo, let me like let me fight for the belt. He's like, well, Diego Lopez, like, his opponent just fell out, you know, fights in three weeks, da, da, da. So I was like, all right, let me look him up. Blah, blah, blah. Look him up. He's like 25 and three. I was like, I was like, all right, well, I'll fight him. But I was like, just give me, like, a couple more weeks. I'm pretty fat right now. But I'll fight him. <laughs> just give me, like, two more weeks. And uh, then he got caught up, like, the next day, so... You know, um, I know you say like, "Oh, I'm really fat right now." But whenever I saw you, you know, at the at the, the contender series, you were you looked like shredded. Shri, yeah, the best shape I've ever seen. I was like, "Dang, it's like yeah, like a like a magazine cover model shirt." Yeah. So I was like, "Dang, this, you look you look great." Yeah, that was a, no, that was the best shape I've ever been in my life. Yeah, hundred percent. And it, and you know, and it's just a lot of work being put in. Like that's literally the best I've ever looked. If you look at all my other fights, like I still got, I'm just not, you know as toned or you know defined and you know i the rehydration was good you know i didn't eat too much didn't drink too much i felt good you know even the next day worked out the pi in the morning before and just you know everything was just on point everything was you know best way cut of my life like everything was so smooth i, I couldn't have asked for a better um lead up i couldn't ask for a better you know fight i, I guess a better result maybe that's the only thing i could ask for but everything was great i mean i i trained them really really hard on my body and I really was working on, you know, try, trying to be in the best shape of my life. It was the biggest fight of my life. I wanted to make sure that I, everything I can control should be controlled to the best of my ability, you know. And most things you can't, right? The decision, right? The judges, you can't control that. But I can control what I eat, what I put into my body, how hard I work, and things of those natures and things I need to do to um, to put myself in a position to be great, to, to succeed, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I worked a lot at um, LJ Performance, that dude is legit. He trains a lot of high level athletes, high, you know, in all sports, you know. So I was just trying to be more athletic, trying to be more explosive. And uh yeah, I've never had a six pack. Like I learned it, never had a six pack in my life. So yeah, I, I mean I watch it back and I'm like, God damn, I look good. I swear to God, I'm like I look fing great, you know. So hopefully we can keep that going and keep that <laughs> the same body, but I just love to eat. Like I've done like five Food challenges, like, I, yeah, I love to eat. I used to what, kind of, what kind of food challenges? I did. Uh, so there's one that was on Man versus Food that I did. It was, like, the the kitchen sink in uh, San Francisco. I did it. That's the only one I didn't win, but I did that one, and I, like, just because I ate that coffee ice cream, and it just tasted nasty. I f- threw all that. But I was killing it. I was literally, like, had, like, 12 minutes left, and there was only, like, one scoop left. But I did, that shit just tasted so nasty. <laughs> But I did a pancake challenge in Leak City over here at Red Oak Cafe. Red Oak Cafe, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I did the pancake challenge, beat that barely, but I beat it. Um, I did the Sushi's Pizza Challenge when it was big on Twitter. Me and my boy did it and uh, beat that, got 500 bucks. Did the B Dubs Challenge, the the spicy wing, <laughs> yeah. beat that, got a shirt. Um, yeah, so the next one's there's a Torta Challenge kind of by the gym. So, <laughs> yeah. but that one might be hard, but I got to. I got to earn it, though. I got to make sure I'm, I'm not eating too much consecutive days, especially not working out. But I got back. Today was first day of training, so we're back to the contact, but back to working out, getting my body back in shape, um, just trying to eat better, you know. But uh, definitely fit that Dorothy challenge in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Maybe when, when I get my weight, you know, back settled down. How, how did you feel with the workout? How's your body feel? I feel good. I just ran, I just ran like three miles. I woke up this morning just... Went for a little ride, just kind of get my body and my legs acclimated. It felt good. Body feels good. I mean, I, like I said, I didn't really, besides the cut, I feel like I didn't really take too much, uh, like, damage on the body. Legs felt good. Body felt good. I feel like I didn't really get hit too much. You know, he didn't really throw too many body shots. or I mean, He threw a couple of leg kicks. I checked them. But I guess we were both just headhunting the whole fight. You know, I should have a little more body fit. One thing, 
I guess one thing DC was saying, he was like, man, that, you know, and you mentioned it too, but your boxing looked great. But he was like, oh, I should have worked in, you know, some more kicks, which you did throw, I think in the third, he threw uh, some kicks. Yeah. Um, listening to that or watching back, and I think you even said you kind of broke down some film with your with your coaches. Like, yeah. is there anything that you wish you could have done different or would you oh. have thrown in some kicks or anything? Or what? Of course. I mean, like the game plan was to box and pressure him. Like that was the game plan, like, and stay out of range, you know, because we knew that, his best shot of winning was landing one big Hail Mary or one big shot, you know. So for us, it was more just, um, what's it called? Just boxing and moving around. And, you know, I definitely could have wrestled a little bit more, just, you know, made it a little more dirty, you know, kept him on the fence a little bit more. You know, I definitely should have done a lot more body shots, just mixing it high and low, high and low. But it's easier to say that, you know, I should have, <laughs> should have done that. Like in the moment, it was hard, especially when everything was landing so good. You know, I think, I, I think, I need to just take a deep breath in there and just let it flow a little bit more and just, you know, do, I can do so many different things, you know, and just boxing, you know, was just on display that night. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. hey, I, I basically want to just throw it a one-two, you know, I think everyone or the commentator were talking about, oh, you should throw something different, you know, it's like the Mike Perry thing, like, you, you throw something different, like, you go in there and throw something different, you know, and it, I don't know, I think everything was just working that I just kept doing what was working that I, you know, for the finish, I probably that's why I probably should have did you know a couple different more things, mixed it up a little bit. But I almost had him out in the third. You know, I threw the teep a couple of times. But I I did throw. I started ripping the body a little bit more in the third, and you could see he was almost out of there. So, you know, I just wish I would have just did a little more and just not let it go to the judges. But easier said than done. You know, it's, I think I'm gonna grow from this and get better from this and see you know what I lacked on and try to improve on those things. Mm -hmm. I guess how different was it? You know, at the apex, it's a controlled environment. I've heard some different things about it, but it's still, I mean, the lights, the, the yeah. cage, you know, competing as you usually sell a ton of tickets yeah. and have a pack house with people screaming there for you, yeah. which I did hear. And I saw somebody commented on, um, on a, you did a Q and A on your store and it was like, Hey, can you hear your dad? <laughs> You're like, absolutely. I can hear it. Yeah. I think I heard, I think I heard him too on, oh, definitely. on the thing, but up. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> well, what's the difference? Between having everybody cheering for you, I guess the apex or right. how was that different? Yeah, I mean it was a little different. Um, it was a little different, but I didn't mind it. Like I thought it was cool. You know, we talked about this earlier. It's just like having my people there. Like when I walked out, there. You know, it's not. It's not like it was hard to find my people there. Right there, they're cheering for me. You know, I got to see them. Got to you know, give them a little wave. And uh, once I saw them, I was good. But once you get into the cage, it's the same thing. It's it's, it's what you've done before. It's like we. I've been here. And working out the apex that morning too, I was in the cage. I was literally very similar to it. So I just knew that, you know, getting there, I was like, oh, this felt very familiar. You know, this felt, you know, where I need to be. And it was good. The, the thing with the apex is it was just very, e like, it was a lot easier to focus because mm -hmm. there's not all that people yelling at you. So it was basically like we're just at practice and I could just hear Chico the whole time just, then, you know, body, head, leg kick, move, 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 you know, switch it, you know, just, so it's just easier to focus for me. I didn't really, you know, you don't hear all the, you don't feel the vibrations and stuff, you know, so it's just, uh, they're quiet, but I didn't mind it. I liked it. I mean, I felt like I could fight with a lot of people, with no people, a couple people. It doesn't really matter to me. You know, once I, once I'm in that cage, I'm, I'm focused on the task at hand. You know, I didn't even know. I, I forgot Daniel was even there, you know, until afterwards. And then, I seen him and I was like, oh, sh I got Daniel. <laughs> you know, I was looking for him when I walked in the cage. I was like, oh, I don't see him, whatever. And then I forgot all about it. You know, then it was just kind of time to lock in. Let's get a little serious and uh, let's try to get try to get this win. Yeah. Uh, what's it like training at four ounce? Love it. It's a lot of uh, talking. <laughs> I, I love it. I mean, it, it just stems from, you know, that, you know, work hard, play hard a little bit, you know, and, uh, kind of pushes us to the talking to you know pushes us a little bit especially when you know me i just started there in november right so i'm the type of person that's gonna go to the best person at the gym and like i want to go with you and as many times as i'm gonna get beat up i keep wanting to go, you know i'm gonna get the next one i'm gonna get the next one i'm gonna get the next one but even if the next one doesn't come for you know a week and uh a big reason why i went there was because of danger and who he is and you know what i was looking for and I just didn't realize that going there was going to feel like so like home, you know, like I didn't realize like when I met everyone and, you know, been at the gym, like this is like something that I really felt like I was missing since, you know, my coach passed like this. 
to where I felt like I have should have been for a while, you know, and it just felt so uh, familiar, it just felt like family, you know. Granted, everyone's Mexican there, so you know that that helps, right? Too, but uh, it's been great, man. It's I mean, you've seen my last three fights. You know, those have been the best three fights of my career. You know, and like I say, you know, it's completely because of them, but it's definitely the mentality changed the the work. You know, it got a little more focus, and it, it just I became happier. Like it seemed like me watching myself in those couple of fights that I'm just happy, like like so glad just to be there. You know, and it. And it translates like when you get to the gym, like it's impossible for like me to be upset. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to go to the gym. Like you're like excited to go to the gym. Like you gave you like a new source of energy, mm -hmm. you know, instead of just kind of like being like, sad, like oh, I got to go to the gym today. Like, oh, like, oh, I don't want to be here. It's like, oh, like, I can't wait to be there. You know, it's like it changes a little bit. You get more excited. You get, you know, helps you push. You know, it's like you see other people staying for class. It's like, oh, I'm going to stay for that class too. I'm going to. You know, we have three consecutive classes in a row. It's like, I'm going to stay for every single one. You know, it's, it, and then you you get the little push, you know. And I think for me, I, I was a new spark, you know, that got there. Someone that kind of kind of mixed things up, you know, stirred mm -hmm. the pot a little bit. You know, not in a negative way, though. You know, it's like I got there. I'm trying to push Daniel. You know, he, his cardio is not great, you know. So my cardio is great, you know. It's, we kind of work, you know, well together, the way that we fight and our balance and how we fight. So, I literally go with him every single day. Like every day, I would call him out. Like I, I was like, I, like I kind of go with you. Like, <laughs> like you know, we'll go three rounds. I'm like, he doesn't want to go fourth round with me. He's tired. He don't want to. He don't want to go five rounds with me. I, I can guarantee that. I was like, he'll never win a fifth round, and that sh shit pisses him off. <laughs> like bad. Like he does not like that. Yeah. You know, but I'm forcing him to have to push. You know, harder than normal, especially he's older. You know, like. This game is a young man's sport. Like, you know, your body's, I mean, he's almost out of 50 fights. Like, this guy's crazy. This guy has issues. He's finished every single fight. Like, he literally has issues, you know, but there's still little things that we can always improve on to get better. So I think I, I, you know, I helped kind of with a little bit of just leadership, a little, you know, direction. Like, you know, I'm always there an hour early because I live an hour and 10 minutes away. So I can't leave, you know, when there's traffic. I can't do that. So, you know, I leave at three, get there at four, you know, about an hour before practice starts and, you know, always on the map, making sure, you know, like, let's start at five, let's do this, let's get the warm-ups going, let's, you know, kind of, not you know, not changing the culture, but just kind of um, making it stronger and building it a little tighter and just kind of, there's a lot of good guys that are there that are so close, you know, Justice is fighting for the, for my title, you know, like, everyone that's won the featherweight championship at Fury has been called up to get an opportunity, right? I mean, that's a big deal. Hector is right there. You find Macklin, who's a top dog too. Like, you know, what are that big implications? You know, I think Auden, Corey is a beast and he's right there, especially the flyweights. You know, they always need some new blood and stuff. So like, I think just a little more direction, a little more, you know, and seeing someone like me, right? Like I got there in November, boom, just racked off two, two wins. And then I'm getting a, a call. It, it's showing that like, Hey, you can do this too. Like we can all do this. I told justice when I got back the first day, I'm like, dude, this is this, this is what we do. This is like you can do this. Like we do this. We already do this. You know, and now we're just doing it on a bigger stage, right? You're doing it in front of data in Vegas. It's not, you know, in Houston in front of you know, it's a little yeah. bit different, but it's like it's still what we do at the end of the day. When we get into that cage, it's what we do. Been here before, done that before. How, how do you see that fight going with Justice? I think you fought his opponent once before, right? Yeah. And I mean, what kind of you give him any inside advice? I mean, of course. He, yeah. I, yeah. I told him this guy's tough, man, and he's hungry. The winner of this is getting the biggest opportunity of their life. Like, you got to be doing everything you can. Like, when I fought Nate, I, that camp was one of the best camps I've ever had. I was just so focused. I was so locked in. And uh, you got to be. This is it. Like, every fight is going to be bigger than your last. But the one that you're fighting right now is always going to be your biggest. You know, so we got to focus on this. I know it's like you worry about like, oh, if I win, then no. no. I mean, yes, you already know that's going to happen. But let's focus on this fight. Let's let's put everything we can. I think he's going to do great. I mean, you see Justice fight. He's a dog, man. But Yachty, here's a dog, too. I mean, we went three rounds together. So, like, he's no chump. You know, he's good. His jiu-jitsu is great. So, you know, he's probably going to want to wrestle and do a little bit of jiu-jitsu and, you know, finish it on the ground. But, I mean, I think it's going to be a good fight. You know, I'll be there. So, yeah, I'm excited for that one. I think you and Justice, did y'all go pro on the same the same card around the same time? 
we kind of had like similar careers and right. you know we fight on the same cars all the time coming up so like it's been nice having each other push each other too sure. and um you know we can like i said we can only train with each other you know for so much to get so much better so now we have Daniel just kind of just beating us both up, and it's, <laughs> you know it's uh, it's uh, very humbling, but it's very um, productive too. You know, it's um, improved my game tenfold. You know, and I'm sure Justice could say the same for him. One of my favorite people I follow on social media, and I don't really know him that well, other than I've seen him and like, hey, thanks for letting us film here, or just whatever, right? Is Frank? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just on social media, his stories and posts and stuff, I'm like. I need a laugh. I just count on. I'm like, oh yeah, I got to see what he posted today. It's, it's great. No, Frank's the man, dude. He um, he's one of the younger coaches, right? Because Daniel and Chico and Joseph, they're all so old, you know. So they're so out of touch with the new generation. Especially all of us, we're all kids. Every not all of us, but you know, a lot of us are younger guys coming up. So Frank's on the younger side. You know, he's still on the old side. You know, he's still old, but he's on the younger side. <laughs> yeah, so he's trying to get in touch with the social media, and you know, knowing that like you know, we see what O'Malley does, all his funny skits and stuff. So knowing that we gotta do that so frank doesn't mind being the being the guy that does that because like daniel would not be in front of a camera he refuses like the ufc came and filmed me for the little like documentaries they want to do with me and we're trying to watch film with the coaches and daniel's just not not sitting on the couch. <laughs> no, he's like i'm good i'm like daniel get your ass on the couch right now he's like so do i gotta coach i'm like you don't even coach on tuesdays and thursdays like sit down and so you know finally we got him to sit down and we're all able to be there, but this man hates the camera. He he refuses the camera. Well, even I guess the fight game has changed big time from whenever Daniel first. Oh yeah, came in and he's I mean, he's a beast. I, I remember one of my my first experiences. I think I went to a, a Fury event in uh, twenty eighteen, and that was the first time I ever. Mm -hmm. And I, he might have been on the card, but I remember it was like, well, anybody one forty five, one fifty five, please, will somebody yeah. fight? Daniel Pineda, we're looking for a fight. Yeah. Anybody will like more money yeah. or this. Oh, yeah. And no, and they could not find a fight for him. No, and he's like, yeah. So the UFC. He was like, yeah, I wasn't coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would have fought. I would have fought his ass. You were like in junior high or something. Right? <laughs> I was 18. I would have fought his ass. I was a amateur. I would have fought him. <laughs> he's lucky. He's, he's lucky then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that he was. I mean, I've, that's what I think. That's the first time I saw him was like at a black. I think it was black tie event or something. And he just became like the Fury double champ. But he was a legacy. He was a one forty five, one fifty five, double champ for legacy. And he was gonna fight for the one seventy belt for legacy. And then the guy missed weight, so they didn't fight for the belt. But he still won. <laughs> yeah, so he's so thinking he so yeah. he do the one seventy legacy. You know, back when Mick was running it, yeah. two time Fury champ. I mean, he was gonna win that PFL. So they didn't do all that or all that stuff that go down or whatever. But he would have won a million dollars for sure. He took out the number two ring guy, and then he subbed Kennedy in like literally a couple hours later. Fought twice, hours, fought twice in one day, and got two finishes. He beat an eighteen year old guy, and then he beat Jeremy Kennedy, who just fought for the forty five uh, Minnesota champ against uh, Pitbull. Mm. Like uh, that dude, dude, y'all don't realize like this guy Daniel is next level. Like he's different level. He's Without a doubt, I've trained with some high level guys, like best in, like that dude's the best. If he had good cardio, he'd be he'd be the best ever. I think he is insane. He's nuts. He's literally got issues. Like I thought I had issues and that I, I trained with him and I said, Oh yeah, he's he's battling some demons because he's killing me. He's like Yeah, he is the real deal. I'm sorry. If you have a chance to train with Daniel Pineda, please do it, bro, before he's gone. Because he's about to be out of the games probably he's probably got a couple more years in him. Now that I'm here, I'm going to try to get him some more years in his career, but that dude is next level, so definitely trade with that guy. I'm serious. What are some things that you're focusing on or you want to improve in before that, that UFC fight? Yeah, I think I'm just, uh, I think I'm, since there's no contact, you know, I don't really have to worry about, you know, hard work, you know, like hard sparring, like hard this, you know, I think this, I can be more technical and just, um, I think I just want to incorporate more, you know, variations of stuff, you know, throw more kicks, high, low, throw more punches, high, low. Just know that, you know, if I want to, I can't throw a kick. It wasn't that I, you know, can't throw a kick. It was like, well, you know, if I throw a kick that he might uh, catch it and want to take me down, right? So it was more being cautious than I can't do it, you know, but I think I can really be more technical in my approach, in my practice, and work on things that I feel that, like, you know, I have been working on, but just keep improving on them and keep getting better and, uh, yeah, I just want to focus on 
being the best version of myself that I can be. And that's going to be mixing in, you know, different things here and there and just continue to work hard and know that, you know, be ready for my opportunity for when it comes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Uh, I guess, you know, I just want to shout out a couple of my sponsors uh, that helped me really a lot with this last camp, especially, I mean, the biggest part of my career, you know, having people help me with that, uh, my family and uh, downtown Houston on navigation right next to the original defense called Vila Arcos. Um, Mexican, you know, breakfast, taco place, um, right, you know, the one restaurant in Houston for a couple of years and, you know, just got back up and running after COVID. So I'm going to shout them out for sure. Definitely shout out to Ritz, Houston, uh, 45, <laughs> my boy Rick, you know, always loves me, takes care of me over there. So, uh, if y'all want to stop in, you know, they got steak and lobster on Friday, you know, during lunch. If you want to stop by, I guarantee you guys will not, will not mind. It's a great place. Uh, shout out. My, they've been one of your sponsors for years. Like they've been sponsors on the amateur. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've known Rick for a while. The guy that runs it, they take care of me. I'm a lifetime member there. So it's, uh, it's nice. They got my card. Uh, yeah, no, they, they, I mean, like I said, they've always taken care of me. Anytime, we, the record is literally like, anytime you need anything, you let me know. And I'm not that type of guy really to like be asking and stuff. You know, of course, when the fight comes up, you know, I'll, I'll ask if I if I really need it, you know. But if I'm struggling bad, like, I'll figure it out. You know, that's just the kind of guy I am. But, um, yeah, he, Rick's been there for a while. He's been there taking care of me. Um, my people, Ace has been exhausted performance. Uh, Mexican Racing League, too. That's kind of one-in-one, you know. That's my uh, my cousin, He's uh cousin Brian, he's also been there since my first fight. So he always takes care of me, he always shows me love and then uh elevate hydrogen water. I was gonna bring that I was gonna bring that one. My last one, yeah. They uh they've been taking care of me, they've been uh supplying me, filming me and um yeah, hooking me up for sure. So my boy Adrian, uh he hit me up and we got to work and he's a man. So those those are the main people that took care of me last camp and been taking me for taking care of me for a little while. So couldn't have done it without them and Thankful for my my mom and my dad, my family, uh, my coaches, my boxing coach Danny, uh, Jacob was uncle. Cool. Yeah, he's uh, we've been boxing, been working together. Uh, LJ Performance, you know my boy Leo, he's a he's a wizard, bro. If you need, if you want to get explosive, if you want to get better training, you want to be like the best, you gotta go to LJ Performance. Get that six pack to pop. Yeah, pop if there. you want a six pack, go to LJ Performance. No, seriously, he's the best. He's the man. Yeah, he's literally the man. It's it's unreal. Like he he. Since November, I've been with him too. So I've been with him, my box coach Danny, and four ounce. And that's all I've been with. And that's all I've done just every single day, you know, mix it up different days and stuff. And uh, the, they changed my game forever. So I couldn't have done it without them, my families, my coaches, my, my partners, my training partners. I'm commentating the Fury uh, Amateur Series this Friday. So tune in. I think it's going to be great. And we didn't even get a chance to talk about that, which we could. But yeah. there's some, there's some well, young guys. that come back tomorrow, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we have to do it in Yeah, I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, Fury, uh, this Friday, a lot of big-time prospects coming up, a lot of young guys that are going to make the name known. I, I feel like, you know, not, I've seen a lot of film on these guys. These kids are different these days. These guys are ready to turn pro at 17, 18 years old. So it's uh, it's exciting, man. I remember when I was there, and it's going to be nice to to watch them and just let them know that hey like y'all got this like y'all can do it because i was just there six seven years ago like it wasn't that long ago that i was there. i was an amateur three years ago three years ago i was an amateur so you know just let them know like hey y'all got this y'all can do this you know go have some fun yeah it's gonna be great you no know, josh van too you know saying i remember you yeah. know going pro and it's like within two years or you know it's like yeah you if you are smart about it train right i i mean You've shown it. Josh has shown it. There's these people that are doing it that, I mean, it's it's really cool to watch. 100%. Let's see. Yeah, it's yeah, going to be dope. Thanks so much for hanging out today. I appreciate you. That's sweet. Thank you. This is Guardy with Clear Life Combat. I'll make sure to follow Michael Aswan on social media. Follow Clear Life. Y'all be blessed.